With around 40% of British men now sporting facial hair, I've decided to put two beard trimmers to the test. Unlike razors and electric shavers, which are designed for a close shave, beard trimmers are designed to maintain a hairier face. Please forgive my hirsute appearance. I haven't shaved for a week. But hopefully I shouldn't be looking quite so dishevelled for long. I'm here at Dashing Blades to meet proprietor Rob. He not only sports a rather dashing beard himself, but he's also an award-winning facial barber. He's the perfect person to put this week's tech to the test. I've come to see whether you need to spend big on a beard trimmer to achieve a great result, or whether a budget one will do the job. The premium offering is the Philips BT9000 Prestige. It provides 120 minutes of battery life from an hour's charge, all for the not-so-trim price of £95. Our budget trimmer is the Remington B5, which comes with 60 minutes battery life and costs around a third of the Philips at just £34. Time to get trimming! Rob, great to see you. A champion beard if ever I saw one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yours is coming along. Maybe next year we'll put you forward for the championships. Yes, well, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd be interested in your first impressions on these two beard trimmers. This is the premium model from uh, Philips. OK, it's got a good weight to it. Quite nice to hold. Sort of like a lightsaber. Mm. Uh, the buttons are in a nice place. It feels good. It feels nice. Mm. Well, this is our budget model, the Remington B5. This is really light. It's more plasticky than the Philips. The speed settings are quite clunky, but the build quality actually is OK. Rob seems to be rather pleased with both trimmers so far, but how will they fare in action? To find out, I'm going to have a go at creating my own designer stubble. Now, Rob, I'm told a sort of five o'clock shadow look is fashionable. How would I achieve that on one, on one of these? Ideally, you want to go to the lowest setting, which ah. is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 millimetres is roughly equivalent to one day's growth. To get that close on the Philips, I'm going to have to remove the plastic guard. It feels very comfortable. It seems to be doing something. So we can easily compare results. I'm shaving half of my face with the Philips, leaving the other half for the budget trimmer from Remington. It says it's got an anti-friction coating which should uh, glide more smoothly across your face. Even in the hands of a novice like myself, the Philips makes quick work of my unkempt face. Mm. I mean, that seemed pretty comfortable and effective. Let's have a swap. There's the Philips. Now we're going to try the budget Remington. Unlike the Philips, this trimmer can cut to 0.4 millimetres with the guard still on. Let's try it. And I'm going to use it to attack the other side of my face. For some reason, it feels slightly more reassuring with the guard on. I don't know why. Um, it's got self-sharpening titanium blades, apparently. The main difference is you've got plastic meeting your skin, whereas uh, with the Philips, it's, it's a completely metal experience. And for me, actually, it's almost better. I feel that's done. What do you think? Surprisingly, I actually think the Remington looks nicer than the Philips. Mm. The Philips has a little bit more of a patchy look. The Remington actually looks more even and neater. Mm. So, if anything, the budget Remington is, is ahead of the premium Philips by a whisker. Next, it's time to up the ante and hand them over to the professional and tackle a much thicker beard. Right, so this is Ian. He's one of my best customers. Mm, looks like the perfect candidate for our next test. I know, John. It's almost like we planned it. Quite. So, we're going to use this on the 8mm setting. Right. First up, it's the premium Philips. It goes up to a maximum uh, length of 10 millimetres. You're still going to get a relatively short beard for that. You know, it wouldn't work with a longer beard. Mm. Normally, your chin is slightly thicker on a beard, so you'll find that you do need to do a little bit more work. The Philips comes with a power adapt sensor, which claims to adjust its motor's power depending on the thickness of your beard, though our pro groomer Rob isn't impressed. I don't necessarily feel that. I'm still finding hairs that are not cut through. With the beard to length, Rob removes the guard for the precise task of tidying and shaping. It's cutting through nicely, uh, but because of where the guard clip is, I actually can't see exactly where the line is. Well, that's the last thing you need when you're trying to do it yourself in the mirror at home. On to Ian's other side and the budget Remington. 
So straight away, it feels a lot nicer to use. It's not fighting me like the Philips was. The Remington has the capacity to go up to 18 millimetres. Definitely useful for a longer beard. Mm. Not long enough for yours, obviously. No, not long enough for no, mine, no. no. I mean, how does it compare on the chin area with the Philips? I think the Philips cut through a little easier than the Remington. He's actually struggling a little bit with the thicker hair. But this is a slightly slower motor, and it's just one speed. So, mixed results for the budget trimmer on longer beards. Next, time to shape Ian's facial hair. It's easier to see the edging on this one because we haven't got that little bar going across. But really, I kind of want to go right down to the skin, but it's leaving a little bit more hair than I would like. Job done! And at first glance, Ian's brushed up rather nicely. But they do say the camera never lies. So, here are the photos. Premium on the left-hand side, budget on the right. What would you see? Uh, well, the first thing I would notice is at the top of the moustache, neither of the trimmers have really caught that as much as I would like. Mm. You can still see hair on the cheek. That, for me, is not great. On the Philips side, overall, it's not too bad. If you can see a few stray hairs sticking out there. Um, it was quite difficult to work with, partly just to do to the design of it. So, yes, the problem was seeing where you were going with it. So the Remington on the cheek is nice and clean. It was slightly easier to work with. Mm. There's a more defined line on the lip than in the Philips side. So it seems both trimmers come up short compared to that professionally barbered finish. But for daily maintenance at home, which of them offers the best value? The premium Philips or the budget Remington? Both of them have their pros and cons, but if I was using it at home, yeah. I would say that the Remington is better value for money. I think overall the Remington is actually really, really good.